Hey guys, welcome back. So over the weekend, we finally made some progress on the garden. We got all of our trellises up, which is really exciting, minus one of them. We actually forgot we bended a few of the posts, so we have to go run to Tractor Supply to get four more posts for our last little cattle panel. But I had all these cattle panels on hand from the year prior, and they're just getting moved around, which I'm really excited about. I love this little entryway, how it's coming together. I put these little blocks out because we had these for years now, and I think they look really nice. Also, the garlic is really poking out. I'm gonna need to put some bone meal on that probably here in a week or two because we are actually planting out onions next week, which is crazy. But let me show you the other arch. So this is the other arch. We ended up putting five here instead of seven just because the end of this kind of gets a little shady. But I'm really excited to have the little tree stump underneath when this fills out. It'll be so cool. I'm actually thinking I might order a few like solar lights to put throughout. But if you don't remember or if you're new here, we had a tree here and this has been a whole process to get this whole area put together. I actually forgot. We actually added the two garden beds over there as well. We did a lot of work last week because we had a lot of really nice weather. And for any gardeners out there, I'm sure you know when you have nice weather like that, sometimes it's just easier to put your head down and try to get a lot done. But I am really, really excited to finally have this space start to look a little bit more like a space. I'm thinking I might order rock for this area because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get grass planted or anything like that. I think rock will probably be the easiest bet, but we'll see. Today, I actually wanted to take you guys down to my little plant grow room. All right, so we have a lot going on in this space. We'll start over here. This is where I have all my Chinese pink celery. I think I have 32 of them going. Look how beautiful that is. It is really doing great. My celery did not look this good last year at all before going out Side. I have fed these twice. I never fed my last ones and the big difference is I also never up potted them last year either. I kept them in soil blocks and I should have transplanted them like I did this year and I think that's made obviously a huge difference. Unfortunately I have had a few issues with my broccoli. My broccoli has just been not doing the best but it'll come through. I'm not too worried about it. That's just not my best seedling by far. The onions I have also fed. I have fed the celery and onions twice. Um, the onions I started the last week of December and since they are so heavily packed in there I really needed to make sure that I at least fed them because again they are high feeders if you want to have good starts you got to make sure that you're doing things pretty well so these will actually go out next week which is really exciting I just cut these back yesterday and they grow back so fast okay so nothing's in here we are going to be planting these out I just wanted to get some soil blocks ready but here are all of my peppers and then I have a cabbage and then also white sage is back here but white sage can take up to six weeks to germinate which is crazy so I had some great pepper success minus over here let's get started so this is which ones are the blues so the blues are bananas the oranges are bell all of these came up I do need a thin a few more these are all the purples are serranos and then I believe these are jalapenos uh, yep yeah, jalapenos so all the jalapenos all the serranos, all the bananas, all the bells came up. And then we ran into the problem where this is paprika. So all the paprikas are really starting to come up. There are a few that still haven't, so I'm probably going to reseed those today. But you can see here, these are the cayennes, and I'm having a few just now pop up and they've been really scattered. Okay, so for back reference, these are sitting at about 14 days since I have planted them, which is kind of the max end for germination when it comes to peppers. So I'm probably going to give these one more day. You can see there's another one popping up. Whatever does not pop up after today, I will probably be reseeding for the peppers. Then I did plant some loofah the other day. Um, this is kind of early for loofah, but for my season, it also isn't. Last year, I had a terrible time with germination with my loofah. So I'm trying them inside this year. I tried to do it outside last year, but our really wet spring just had a lot of issues with germination so I did start those inside just because again they are a very long season so we have all of my tomatoes which also sprouted the tomatoes are looking absolutely amazing so I do have six bumblebees which is a cherry tomato variety on that other uh, trellis I was explaining how we're gonna have those two separate outside of the tunnel I'm gonna have San Morzano's on that I wasn't originally going to plant some San Morzano's, so I need to plant those today as well but all of these are Roma which will be in the in-ground space. This is my garden plan area and I 
showed you guys this at the beginning and over the weekend I actually kind of crossed a few things out and changed a few things so we are no longer putting the chicken coop here we're going to put it over here kind of under the tree between the Roma tomatoes and this area over here if you guys remember my really cool a-frame pumpkin trellis we are gonna actually rebuild that in the ground over here then we're gonna put our hoop house over here as well and we're just gonna free up that area entirely it's really shaded and it wasn't going to be the best option so that kind of moved things a little over compost is gonna stay I'm gonna have a ton of grow bags over here instead then that is the trellis I was explaining that was originally over here so we're gonna have San Marzano and green beans and then that kind of gives you the visual of the walkway of how things are gonna be I have my goldie honey bears cherry tomatoes I'm just so excited guys so that kind of gives you the little update of the garden plans all right so I did like I mentioned, get soil blocks ready. If you guys watched my seed starting process video, I explained in that video, you will notice a lot of my things are in nursery pots. So I did start my celery in soil blocking, but that's one of the few things I did start and I did transplant. I didn't want to do a ton of transplanting. My philosophy is kind of the less you mess with something, the better, especially because the more you transplant, the more you have root disruption. So one thing that's really cool about soil blocks is they get a lot more air to their roots just because they're not enclosed by plastic and then you also don't have all of this plastic cleanup at the end of seed starting season so if you did not know it's really smart for you to clean all of your seed starting equipment in between that includes trays nursery pots the whole shebang because you never know what disease may have happened or if there will be anything lingering or starting up so having a sterilized product when you go to do any seed starting is kind of smart it's kind of a pain in the butt to get all of this stuff clean and that's one reason why I really do like soil blocks but I only really like to use soil blocks in that four to six week window before things go out so this is a two inch soil block they do have one that's bigger than this I really really like soil blocking it also makes it so much easier when you are going out in your garden and planting because you can just set this into the hole instead of having to mess with the nursery pot deal with the nursery pot etc you get what I mean but today we are pretty much starting all herbs and flowers mine is probably a handful of things I will be starting lavender tonight so I ended up ordering a bunch more seeds just to restock on stuff I've used just to have a stock of things and I ended up ordering a handful of things that I haven't had and lavender is one of those things that has never really gone well for me just because I never really did the whole cold stratification that's needed for the seeds so one thing that's stated on the back of this packet in particular is is you want to start these sprinkle on a moist paper towel put it in a plastic bag and then stick it in your fridge for 30 or 40 days because that's going to mimic winter time because typically these seeds would have spent winter outside and they need that cold spell to be able to germinate so this is something that's going to be kind of a project I will probably be doing this throughout the summer months but I did want to start lavender because it's a great perennial and it's something I do not have established in my garden that I just one and two since year one and here we are five years later and we still don't have it established but I'm starting echinacea today I'm starting some zinnias today nasturtiums today I'm really excited about this as well so this is an aster china giant perfection mix it's a peony type flower but this is an annual on like a peony um really excited about this I just I wanted to add even more color to my garden um, I'm doing some chamomile today some onion chives and then we are going to do some basil, lettuce, and some zinni, some hyssop. So hyssop. I am starting a few hyssop by seed this year. So if you have followed my garden for the last few years, you will notice I have had hyssop pretty much everywhere. The one thing that concerns me is since we did that complete entire remodel in the fall, I'm worried that a lot of hyssop won't come back. And a lot of that hyssop I had planted won't really be an ideal spot. So I am going to plant out a handful. I have so much hyssop still in pots so I'm only going to do a handful of these and it's purely because I love the bees and they love hyssop so that's a really long story about why I'm starting hyssop but going along with all of my little seeds I restocked up on I've always done Italian Genevieve I believe is how it's pronounced this is pretty much traditional sweet basil it's great um, I have a million and one seeds you can clearly tell this packet is huge and there's still a lot of seeds in it I don't know how much six grams of seeds would be but it feels like thousands um I ended up getting this free 
basil variety. So when you order from Baker Creek and also Botanical Interest, you get free packets of seeds, which is kind of fun just because it's a surprise. Um, I've never had blue spice basil, so I figured I'd plant a few because that sounds very intriguing. If you've ever had it, please let me know kind of the flavor profile on it. But I did order this purple basil, which I've heard tastes phenomenal and I'm really, really excited. I have probably enough dried basil to last me another two years. I'm planting majority of this basil for fresh use and also for bugs. Um, I'm planting marigolds today for bugs. A lot of people don't like marigolds, but for example, two years ago, I had hundreds of hornworms, right? Hundreds. It was insane the amount of hornworms I had. Last year, I, I tried to find a hornworm. I tried. I had my blue light. I did everything possible to try to find hornworms and I really couldn't find any, which was crazy. And it's because I did a lot of companion planting. So marigolds and basil really are supposed to help a lot of pests with tomatoes. I will say I still had a lot of aphid problems and mite problems with my tomatoes, but I didn't have hornworm problems. And I'd rather deal with those two over hornworms any day. So I'm going to continue that this year. I'll be really interested to see if I have very similar results just because Exact. Okay, so hold on. Story time. So over last week, I was getting a lot of stuff cleaned up, right? Just to get that tunnel installed. I should have pulled out my phone and got a clip of this. I saw a caterpillar the size of my pinky just walking across the ground. This was what the first week of March. That is not good. I feel like we're going to have such a bad pest year this year because really we didn't get really, really cold enough to get our ground to freeze. Oh, and another update for you guys. So remember in the fall, how I mentioned all the beneficial nematodes that I was spraying across my garden to help with grubs. Well, I'm happy to report I was dealing with all of that compost as well last week. And I was only, I only found a handful. Like when I say a handful, I'm talking like four or five grubs in this entire area when I was finding like 40 to 60. I told you guys when I did that in the winter, I thought I'd have to do one more round here in the spring, which I went ahead and ordered. Um, so they should be here any day and I'll probably be spraying those out next week when I plant out the onions as well. I'm going to do my little seed starting today. Um, there's nothing that crazy about what I'm doing today other than planting some flowers and seeds, but I wanted to give you guys an update on everything going on. Next week is going to be a really big week. We're planting out onions. We're going to be planting out broccoli. Maybe I need to be... I am redoing our hoop house. So Bootstrap Farmer sent me um, a hoop bender and I'm really excited to upgrade the hoop because one problem with the PVC piping we've used is it likes to collapse in the winter if we get any type of snow or a lot of wind or there's just a lot of not good stuff with the PVC. It's worked for the last two years, but this winter it completely ripped our entire insect netting. So we need to get that hoop house moved and rebuilt. And one question I've gotten a million and one times is how we made our small hoop house. So if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed because that is the plan for next week's video. I plan to remake this hoop house with my husband and give you guys a DIY on how to do it because I know it's really helped my crops as far as my brassicas and also my squash to help with vine bore. And I think it's one of the best things we have created on our little space here. Either way guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update. I can't believe we, I think next week starts spring. I think next week's the start of spring. We are into spring. It's so exciting. Either way guys, I'm going to get these seeds planted and then I'm going to start some dinner because I'm already getting hungry, but thanks for joining me today. I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.